Hello, welcome to your 17th C-Sharp tutorial. This one's going to be about something that I call access modifiers, or sometimes just called modifiers. It doesn't really matter. What they are is they restrict what they can, what classes can access what. There are keywords like private, public, protected, static, and override. We're only going to talk about private, public, and static in this tutorial, but we'll get to the rest of them eventually. Okay, so, sir, static. Static variables are variables that do not vary by instance of object. Instance of object just means if I have a class book, like I so often do, and then I have, like, for example, you know, like public in pages or something here, this is different for every class of book, right? Because you have to, you know, individually set it for every book. However, if you type static like that, now there is one variable pages for every instance of book. And yeah. So to access a static variable, you you don't type like book x equals new book, and then you type x dot pages. Ah, oh, it's not there. Yeah. So what you do is you type book dot pages because it's universal for the class of books. You just type book to get to it. You don't have to make an, an instance of it. Um. Yeah. So usually use the static keyword for constants. Like if you were going to make a game or some simulation, for example, you need the gravitational constant. You might do, I'll just do it here, I guess. Public static float g equals 6.67, like that. Because, you know, you're not really going to be changing your gravitational constant very much. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't do that like that. At any rate, um, yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. You might use it for constants. That's very common use for it. Another good use for it is that it lowers the amount of memory it takes because what the compiler does is it only creates one of the variables for the entire class. Like it doesn't, if you have like a million books, it's only be one integer pages. So it can save you on memory if that ends up being an issue. You can also save you in computational time. For example, if you were making a game and you had a bunch of pictures, and you wanted to process these images in a particular way before the game starts, you can do that all at once, and then all of your um, enemies, for example, can have like the same animation. And it doesn't take millions of bytes to store the data for it, and it, well, I guess that's not that much, is it? But, and it doesn't take um, a lot of processing time either, because you only have to do it once for every class. You have to do it whenever they're created. So that's very useful. Now, that's pretty much it for right now about the static keyword. We're going to go into public and private. And you notice I've used public and private here. Um, so what public and private are, well, they're very similar because they both restrict which methods or variables can be accessed from where. The location that's currently being run in, for example, a method is called the scope. The public keyword indicates variables that can be accessed from any scope. So, for example, like this one, public static in pages, this one I can get from down here because it's public. So if I do book.pages, and then I can do whatever I want with that value. And the, but if I had a value private static in pages, also I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but to do it again, if you don't define, if you don't use public or private, it's by default private. So if I did private like that, then if I try to access it from here, can't do it. So uh, private is a lot more common because usually it's what variables and um, the use of variables and methods are because it's not only is it by default, but also because it's usually a good idea. Um, usually these variables aren't going to be outside the class access outside the class, and if they are, it can be insecure because, for example, if you had an image and you could access the width and the height of it and change it and everything from outside the class, then what if, so what if you like accidentally changed the width to like 1,000? Then the picture would think it was 1,000 pixels long, but it, you didn't really change the picture, did you? You just changed the variable that says how big it is. So that would be an issue, and that's an example of when you would use a getting um, method. Like, what a getting method is is just a method that returns a single value. Usually it's from a private variable, but it, I, you could do it for a public one too. All you do is, a simple since our thing is static, I'm going to make it, this method static too. Also, um, yeah, public static int 
get pages, for example, and then all this getting method does is return pages. Now, you can go up here and type get pages like that, and now you'll have the same thing as if you had just gotten the pages variable by accessing like book.pages, except for now you can't change it, like you can't assign this to 10, because that doesn't really make any sense. So, yep, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, uh, although there is another thing that you can do with accent modif with setting ver instance variables and whatnot, and that is you can define your own getting and setting methods. I'll talk about that probably next time. So thanks for watching and goodbye.